Hey guys, welcome back to Hike Oregon. Today's video is going to be all about choosing and using trekking poles. If you are new here, welcome to the Hike Oregon family. I make hiking and backpacking vlogs as well as gear reviews and just general tips and tricks videos to help you become a more confident hiker and backpacker. If you enjoy content like that, click that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are notified every time I make a new video. And if you want more content from me, you can always support me on Patreon where for as little as just $1 a month, you get a ton of extra content. So if you are new here, you might not know this, but I have actually been making YouTube videos since the summer of 2016. And that whole time of making all these gear videos and tips and tricks videos, I've never done a video about trekking poles. Why you ask? because for the longest time, I was not a trekking pole user. For years and years, I just didn't use trekking poles, whether it be for backpacking or day hiking or any scenario. I didn't even use trekking poles for snowshoeing, which they've really come in handy for snowshoeing, but I'll get into that later. So I didn't really understand the benefits or see the need for trekking poles, thus I never made a video about them because was not passionate about trekking poles. So as I've done more hiking and backpacking and also hiking in different terrains, I have come to see the benefits of trekking poles. So I thought now is a great time to go over some of the benefits on trekking poles. And then also there are so many trekking poles out there, so many different brands, so many different types and designs, and how do you know which one to get? So um, the second part of the video is gonna be about choosing the right trekking poles for you. So obviously the number one benefit of trekking poles is enhanced stability. So by adding two additional points of contact while you're hiking, just adds stability. Especially beneficial when going downhill, maybe you're on loose gravel type terrain, uh, keeps you from slipping and falling. It really adds a extra sense of security when doing tough terrain especially. Also there are definitely circumstances where folks, um, even if they're not on challenging terrain, who would prefer to have that extra stability. For years, um, because I take a lot of pictures and have my camera and stuff, for the most part I just have one trekking pole and even just having one trekking pole adds stability. There's definitely been times where I'm on something really steep and I am slipping and the trekking pole has caught me and it's kept me from falling, which is really nice. Really the only time that I have two trekking poles is when I'm snowshoeing. That is when um, having two and having that rhythm is super nice. And also um, snow can just be tricky to hike in. So having two trekking poles for that is a must. The next pro of trekking poles is joint support and injury prevention. Using trekking poles takes a lot of pressure off of your knees, especially when going downhill. I have definitely found this to be true. It is so much easier on your joints, on your body, when you have trekking poles going down super steep. And it just absorbs some of that shock that you would be only putting into your knees when going downhill. So highly, highly recommend especially if you have um, joint issues or if you're doing a lot of steep terrain, trekking poles are a must. Another pro is improved endurance. You might not like be super aware of this when you're using them, but if you use them on one hike and then not on the next, you might notice this. It just helps conserve some energy. When using trekking poles, I find that I can be more in a hiking rhythm. That is great for en energy conservation. Also, like I just mentioned, it takes a lot of pressure off your muscles. So when going uphill, your quads are doing so much work. So when you have trekking poles and you're climbing like this, some of that effort is now being put on your upper body, 
which is super great because us hikers generally have really, really strong legs and kind of puny upper bodies unless, you know, we go to the gym. A lot of hikers are really strong in their lower body and this is a great workout. So if you're climbing up that hill, you got the trekking poles, you'll feel it in your back for sure. Your arms, your, sh your shoulders, you'll feel it. It's a great workout and it takes so much strain off your quads. Next is balance and posture. I have found that when I don't use trekking poles, a lot of the time, you know, you can be hunched over, especially if you have like a backpacking backpack on, you can be kind of hunched over. So uh, trekking poles really helps you to kind of be more upright. Also the balance. Balance is huge. I've found trekking poles immensely helpful when I'm crossing rivers, especially if I'm on a log and I need that balance. I mean, I have pretty good balance, but I would not be able to cross a river or creek that's flowing on a log without a trekking pole. I would guaranteed I would fall. Always, always, always when I'm backpacking, I have a trekking pole. It is just a must because I know I'm gonna be crossing creeks or rivers at least one time during a trip. I remember doing the Timberline Loop. I think that's one of the first trips, backpacking trips, that I took trekking poles on because I knew the huge river crossings on that loop. So I was like, ah, oh, I'll take a trekking pole. You know, I know it's a good idea, just not hadn't done it. It was a game changer and ever since then backpacking I've always taken a trekking pole. Another thing I wanted to mention is that when you have trekking poles your um, circulation is better in your hands. All my hiking friends use trekking poles up until kind of recently I haven't so I was always the one on day hikes to like have you know huge swollen hands because I'm walking with my hands down. None of my friends have this issue because they have they have trekking poles, so their hands are up. So this is huge. I hate that feeling of having swollen hands. It is so bad, especially in the summertime. Highly recommend if you have this problem, trekking poles, you won't have this issue anymore. And last but not least, another pro is versatility. Trekking poles are not only trekking poles. They can be used for... Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Oh my gosh. Hi. <laughs> oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? I'm talking about trekking poles. <laughs> Can you wait? There's a sweet face. It's a sweet face. So, trekking poles can also be used for other things, especially during your backpacking trips. Something that I've seen hikers use trekking poles for. I have not done this, but something I recently saw in a YouTube video, I'll link the channel here. They're currently through hiking the PCT, and they came up with this genius tripod thing that they put together three of their trekking poles and they hung their knock vecto water bag and their water bottle and made their own like gravity filter system because they're currently in the desert on the PCT and so there's not a lot of trees to hang your gravity filter from. So they just made this cool tripod contraption and it seems to work wonderfully for them. So that's a great idea. Another thing is obviously tents. A lot of tents nowadays are trekking pole tents. I have one from Outdoor Vitals and you use your trekking poles instead of tent poles. So you're saving weight when you're backpacking this way because you already have trekking poles backpacking and now you're just using them as your tent poles. I have a tent that actually has tent poles so I don't need my trekking poles for that but my tent has an awning that um, you would need two trekking poles for. So um, I have not actually used the awning because I, like I said, usually just have one trekking pole. So that doesn't really help me. I think that's pretty much it. Um, trekking poles, I think, are definitely the way to go. You know, um, your river crossing, you can't really see through the murky water trekking pole. Test the water. See how deep it is. Is there a big rock right there or something? You know, I've definitely done that. Trekking poles are just, they just come in handy so much. Also, like I said earlier, snowshoeing, they are a huge, huge help. I think this year was the first time that I really used trekking pole snowshoeing. And my goodness, I i mean, I've always kind of disliked snowshoeing. Now I know why my friends were having an easier time snowshoeing than I was because I wasn't using trekking poles. So I'm trying to stomp through the snow, you know, with no aid basically. The trekking poles aid 
in snowshoeing so much and I was expending so much less energy and it just made the trek so much more enjoyable. Now I'm gonna show you the two trekking poles that I have, different designs, go over some of the features that trekking poles have and why you might want some over the other. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about just cause I have them right here is the size of the trekking poles and how it folds together basically. So there are um, a few different designs. This is the just the one that you extend and it doesn't fold down as small. As you can see, it's quite large. So. That's something to keep in mind, especially if your day pack is pretty small. This one is hard for me to put in, especially my summer day pack. And then this one is the one that I take backpacking because it's just super, super compact. It's the like Z fold or whatever they call it. And then it just extends out like that. So it's super small, super compact. This one is also a little bit lighter weight. The next thing to look out for when buying trekking poles is the material they're made out of, which also goes into the weight aspect of them. Poles can be made out of all sorts of different things. None of mine are are super fancy. None of mine are the super lightweight material. However, I will say weight does make a difference. These ones are heavier than these ones and I can definitely feel it on a longer hike that these ones are heavier. You know, you do have to lift them up with your arm. So keep that in mind. Also, if you're carrying it part of the way, like if you're not using your trekking pole the whole hike, you're gonna have to carry this, right? Also, something to keep in mind is the material of the grip. Some of the more expensive poles are going to have cork handles. Cork is um, absorbent. It's gonna absorb your sweat. It's going to form nicely to your hand shape. Cork is better. So the more expensive trekking poles will have cork. I have found that with this, um, you can see these are fairly old. These grips have been chewed by chipmunks, ground squirrels and such. So they're a little messed up looking. This is definitely more of a foam material. Your hands can get sweaty on this one. But I don't know why, maybe it's like a sentimental thing at this point, but these trekking poles have gone on all of my backpacking adventures with me and they're just sentimental. So even though they're not the best trekking poles, at this point they're like my little security blanket. So I love these and I, I take them with me whenever I go backpacking. Okay, so the aluminum poles, which is what these are. They're usually, I mean, they're durable. Um, they're suitable for, like, I've had these since 2018, I think, and they have not broken or bent. And I've been on some gnarly terrain. So aluminum is fine. The carbon fiber, like I said, is going to be a little bit more expensive. So if you get carbon fiber poles with the cork handles, you're going to pay a pretty penny versus something like this aluminum with um, just a synthetic handle, much, much, much cheaper, like a third or a fourth of the price. I have not seen trekking poles without straps. I think they all come with straps and they're always adjustable. So, but some straps are a little bit different. These are just simple nylon straps versus um, my more expensive trekking poles have a little bit of cushion on the strap. So it, it feels much better on your wrist when you're using the trekking pole. Next thing to look out for is like the locking mechanism. Personally, I've not seen anything different than what's on here. Basically, it's just like a clamp that you tighten and you clamp down. I've not seen anything that's a whole lot different than these. You'd basically just choose the size that you want and you clamp it down. And trekking poles come in different lengths. So make sure when you are buying your trekking pole that it can actually go to the length that you need. If you are a tall person, get a longer trekking pole. You can always make it shorter. So if you're a short person, it doesn't really matter. But if you're a tall person, this is definitely uh, keep an eye out on how many inches it can uh, extend. And also keep in mind what else you're going to use the trekking pole for. So if you are getting trekking poles and you're also going to have a trekking pole tent, you are going to want ones that are like this design, the um, adjustable pull out design because trekking pole tents have to be adjusted that way. You're gonna stick the thing in, you're gonna make the pole higher so that your tent is nice and tight 
um, whereas these don't have much extendable, like they can't get very short unless you collapse them, right? You could run into issues with that. So I cannot take these on trips where I'm taking my trekking pole tent. So keep that in mind if you're gonna use it for other things. And most trekking poles come with like little rubber tips. They're, uh, most of them are sharp at the bottom. So they do come with rubber tips if you're walking on like concrete or something like that. Uh, you can put those on and most of them come with snow baskets as well. So uh, snow baskets you just screw on and they help you when you're snowshoeing. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about trekking poles, just comment below. I will also link down below an article just kind of overviewing everything I talked about and also linking examples of different kinds of trekking poles in case you are interested in purchasing some. If you don't already, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram. That's where I post all of my recent hiking and backpacking adventure pictures. And if you want to hike and backpack here in this amazing state of Oregon, check out my website, hikeoregon.net, and you'll find tons of information there, as well as get access to the hiking guide books that I've written over the years. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next adventure.